Hello and welcome to your daily crypto news. Before you go any further, make sure that you are a subscriber to our channel. Once you're a subscriber, you can enter our contest. We're doing a $500 Bitcoin giveaway. Uh, details are behind me. All you've got to do is like and comment on any of our videos between July 1st and August 31st to get one entry, but you can enter on every single video. So we're picking eight winners. Uh, love giving back to the community. Big shout out to the Bit Squad, everybody that's been engaging with our content, liking, sharing, the whole nine yards. So let's jump in today to the news. The market is up. Praise the Lord. We had a big pump on Friday night, hovered around 6400 and then today we were able to go up a few more hundred dollars for Bitcoin. The market cap went up about $10 billion from yesterday. Right now, the market cap is sitting at $270 billion and Bitcoin dominance has begun to fall. Still in what I consider a danger zone, 41.9% for altcoins. Um, we really want that number under 40%. The lower that number drops, with the increasing market cap, that's really good for those of you guys like myself who are hoping for an altcoin season. So, uh, Bitcoin right now is sitting at 66.14. It has been able to uh, to stay there pretty much all day. I think it was at 65.90 at some point. Um, it was a little bit higher than this, approaching 67. Uh, let's check out the chart real quick for Bitcoin. Uh, what I want to do is I want to show you guys the one month chart. And it looks very robotic. Um, I watched uh, Crypto Daily's video he put out today. He pointed out the same thing. And I really agree. I don't know if we've seen, uh, well, if we zoom out and look at the three-month chart, for instance, you'll see that <laughs> you can tell a remarkable difference between the last two months where it was just kind of normal curvy lines to all of a sudden the last month everything is boop. Over here, it looks like just straight drops and straight uh, spikes, which is really bizarre. And, and I think, unfortunately, that just leads you to believe it's got to be manipulation. Uh, some of the volume spikes that we've had over on the hourly numbers that have been able to get us on these huge pumps, like they're very bizarre where the money's coming from uh, to be able to make these pumps like this. So it's just very interesting. Something to keep your eye on. Uh, it's It feels like, and I could be wrong on this, it feels like that the price has been manipulated downwards for a long time. And maybe it's kind of like where uh, the institutional money is releasing the hold because now they're trying to manipulate the price up. I don't know if that really makes sense to you, but that's kind of what I'm thinking is going on. I hope we're not in a bull trap, but the spike today combined with the spike on Friday night, it does look like we could be seeing a trend reversal, uh, which obviously I think we all want to see. Uh, if you look here, I know we don't do TA on the channel, but here in this zone, you've got what is a double bottom between there and there. And just like we talked about with our minor conspiracy theory, that once it gets under $6,000, it shoots right back up. So it's very interesting uh, times in Bitcoin right now. I've seen a lot of technical analysts say they don't even really know what's going on right now. Nothing the market is doing is making sense. And that, in my mind, lends to uh, believe that it is manipulation. Okay, so this... Keeping along with the theme, uh, this is at BitMEX Rect on Twitter. If you follow this, this is basically a bot that displays every time people get liquidated. And usually it's not this much. As you can see, a lot of people got liquidated when they were shorting Bitcoin um, at $6,519. And a lot of people got wrecked. And honestly, uh, no offense to those people, I hate that they lost money. But if you are a longtime hodler, this is what you want to see. You want to see people get crushed for shorting Bitcoin. You want to see people who are longing Bitcoin uh, and betting on the price to go up to get rewarded. But we've seen this before with people shorting Bitcoin. It doesn't seem to stop people from doing it when we're in a bear market, obviously, but hopefully we are reversing that trend. So just to reiterate everything we've already been talking about, but a lot of people were wondering, was Friday night a dead cat bounce? Now, it sounds like exactly what it would be in real life. If you dropped a cat, that was dead, it would hit the pavement and it would bounce. And I don't know if it would literally bounce, but you kind of get the idea. But it would still be dead. It would, If you dropped it from high enough, it would bounce when it hit the ground, but it was still dead. And that's kind of the idea behind a dead cat bounce, which is when you're in a super bearish market and the price jumps up, but the price is really dead. And so it's really just smoke and mirrors where it's a bounce and it's going to go back down. Um, uh, you can think kind of a Bart Simpson where the price goes up and then goes back down uh, shortly thereafter. 
But it seems like, once again, with the action that we had today, that this may not be the case, and that it looks like we could be starting to break out, which I'm telling you, I am so tired of making news videos that are negative. I can't wait for us to get back going bullish so we can have positive news. Even back in April, it was a lot more fun making news videos because uh, a, a lot of the news was good. So hopefully, um, you know, that's where we're moving towards. So speaking of good news, we have Coinbase Custody is officially open for business. So uh, last week, Coinbase Custody accepted its first deposit. Uh, and this is on the Coinbase blog. Today, we're proud to announce that we're officially open for business. Over the coming weeks, we'll continue onboarding a set of world-class clients that includes leading crypto hedge funds, exchanges, and ICO teams. So this is really huge news. Um, you probably understand a little bit more about this if you are in the stock investing world or the financial sector. But for the rest of the people that are not super into that world, this basically means that Coinbase is now able to take on large financial clients, like it said, ICOs or hedge funds or maybe even banks, and take them in and be able to help them get into the cryptocurrency market. For a lot of these larger institutions, they have to do what's called OTC trading, which is over the counter. Because if you are a hedge fund manager of a $17 million hedge fund and you want to invest part of that hedge fund into cryptocurrency, you can't go to Coinbase and make a $1 million deposit. That doesn't make sense. So what happens is the people that are wanting to invest larger amounts of money, they do it through other means. So they contact people directly maybe. And those people that they contact, let's just say those people are holding a ton of Bitcoin, they will actually sell the Bitcoin to those institutions at a much higher number than it's being traded for because the people that are investing will take the trade off to buy it at a higher number to be able to get all their money in at one time because eventually they believe the market is going to go up. So people estimate that there is possibly $10 billion or more just sitting out there waiting to get into crypto. I personally think it's probably a lot more that have not really had an avenue. So now that Coinbase custody is officially open, this is going to appeal to a lot of higher end clients, not the average trader like you or I. Uh, and this is where a lot of institutional money will hopefully come in and push the price up. Okay, let's check out some altcoin news. The ByteBall wallet is now available. We just talked about ByteBall a couple weeks ago in a news video about how their team had kind of came out of the shadows, if you will. And now you can actually download the app from the App Store. But here's the catch. What they say is that this is really just updated for the latest version of iOS. And if you have an older version, uh, or maybe if you have an older phone, that they don't expect it to work perfect. Basically what they're saying is just they're gonna continue to improve the project and the product of the wallet. So don't think if you download it, it's a finished product because it's not, it should be secure and it works, but it's not ultimately what they're going to end up going with. So Ethos, speaking of wallets, if you guys watched our Ethos review video of the wallet, uh, I was part of the testing program. I was very honored to be part of that. <laughs> I mean, they didn't choose me. I just filled out an application. I got picked. But, um, you know, I was still honored. <laughs> and uh, now the wallet is going to be released in the Netherlands for the Android App Store. And the Apple iOS version will also be coming soon. We're starting to see a lot of wallets come out for mobile devices, which is so exciting because that is the, cha uh, the channel or the avenue by which the mainstream is going to use crypto. It's going to have to be on a phone. Most people are not going to go on a desktop computer and download a wallet. But this is big news for Ethos as they just continue to get their project out there, which is really great. Uh, Neblio. So we this is one we haven't actually looked at in depth. Um, it is one that's kind of on my list, kind of down on the list, though. Hopefully I will get to it at some point. But they have now partnered with Project Manager. So Neblio-based uh, projects will now be able to plan more efficiently and launch their projects faster with a 25% discount on all projectmanager.com plans. The partnership is yet another step in the road to make blockchain technology accessible to everyone and turning Neblio's vision of blockchain development ecosystem into a reality. So basically what this partnership is going to allow Neblio to do is people that are trying to build on their platform, they're going to be able to get a discount for working with Project Manager. So Project Manager can be integrated with over 400 different third-party products, including Salesforce. So hopefully this will be a really good um, addition to uh, Neblio and people will be able to use this software. So Ethereum, this to me is one of the more troubling stories out there right now. 
Um, it isn't necessarily a black mark on Ethereum. One of the things in December that really hurt the bull run, I don't know how much longer it could have got extended. Of course, we went parabolic, so it's kind of hard to say like, oh, well, what could have happened differently? But Bitcoin scaling and the speed of the transaction times was causing a lot of FUD. And so that's when everybody started talking about scalability, how to scale your blockchain. And with Ethereum right now, their transaction fees have been increased by 7,000%. And they say that it's due to the fact that people are doing tons of airdrops. We see it everywhere. And those airdrops, I mean, if you just go on Twitter and just hashtag, you know, search hashtag airdrop, you'll see so many different airdrops that you can be a part of. And unfortunately, those are clogging up the network. So this is something Ethereum is really going to have to work on and get figured out, you know, how can it avoid this problem with the airdrops? Because this isn't going to slow down. They're only, only going to get higher. And this is going to really affect the ability of Ethereum to scale out. And if we do hit another bull run, then it's going to be super important that that is something that Ethereum is going to be able to fix. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to smash the like button for us. Become a subscriber. Enter our contest. Big shout out, as always, to the Bit Squad. I love you guys. Until next time, that was your daily crypto news.